Welcome to The Hump. This week, we're getting casual. Joining us this week, for the first time in eight weeks, Mr. Julius Grafton. Welcome. Ooh, welcome back. Thanks. All right. And as always, the lovely Meg. Hello there. And the radiant Sophie. Thank you. Now, casual. This week, we're going to talk about all things casual, including the casualised workforce and some mm. very major changes that may be coming our way to the detriment of the industry. But we're going to get into that right after this. Okay, welcome back. Now, there's some proposed changes to uh, the way that casuals in our workforce uh, are treated by their employers. And this is a pretty big deal for our industry because quite a lot of us, and me for most of my career, uh, are employed in a casual basis Ooh. because of just the nature of the cyclical nature or, or you know, random nature of the work. Now, uh, Julius, can you uh, fill us in a little bit more on what these details are? Yeah, well, the unions have proposed to Fair Work Australia that the um, casualisation of anybody who's worked more than six months mm -hmm. uh, become formalised. So you would become permanent part-time mm. or you would become full-time. And thus you would have a redundancy payment for when you're boned mm. and you would have leave entitlements um, and potentially long service leave. Mm. Um, it, it's a disaster for our industry yeah. Yeah. completely. Imagine you had a follow spot operator casually employed for six months on Aladdin. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Then yeah. suddenly their, their status changes. And then at the end of the run, Assuming it went long enough, mm. um, redundancy provisions will kick in when they're asked to go away. Well, that, that so how, no will, how will the employer afford that? Well, um, the unions say there's no net cost to the employer, but you see, you don't put redundancy provisions on the books. Yeah. And mm. as soon as you say to somebody, you're no longer required, that's a redundancy. And if yeah. you're aged over 40, there's even more redundancy so redundancy can be a very big deal. Mm. Mm. But this can't possibly apply, like can't can't be applied to our industry. I mean, like the theatre example is perfect. I mean, that's that's every technician and, and well, even the performers as well. Mm. Like you've just done nine months in cats and suddenly you get a redundancy payment. Yeah, it's or? craziness. Um, Live Performance Australia have petitioned against it. They've mm. made submissions against it because obviously the theatre producers think mm. this is a disaster. Mm. Imagine, for example, a crewing agency where Imagine I was a casual and I did four or five shifts a week in summer and bugger all in winter. Mm. Well, I'd go back to the crewing agency after six months and say, OK, I'm permanent part-time now. Yeah. yeah. And they'd go get lost. Mm. So is this definitely coming into play? <laughs> no, it's, it's, look, it's being considered at the moment. Mm. I think it's ridiculous. It's great as a person that's being employed. But I wonder for those who will be doing the, the employment, do they get to five months and go, uh, I know you're awesome, but, you're but I've got to cover myself yeah. Yeah. and then they've got to retrain because that's why as a casual, you are paid the extra dollars to cover off the sick leave, the holiday mm. leave. Mm. And as we were discussing before, when you are on a casual basis, you're kind of thinking, am I going to have a sickie or not? Mm. Because if you don't turn up, you don't get paid. So mm. it's a great incentive, mm. like if you, you work, you get paid. Mm. But I just think it's an absolute disaster and people are struggling financially as it is. Mm. You, oh, I, no, don't well, agree. I, I don't think it's gonna get up. I mean, think of all the industries that rely on a casualised or seasonal workforce, yeah. I mean, fruit yeah. picking. Yeah. Like, if, if they've got six months harvest, isn't that, isn't that the trail they do from Queensland down or whatever, that, that's a few months work. Different mm. employers. Well, if it goes into that many <coughs> industries. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's so many industries this could affect. I think yeah. there's gonna be a lot of people who are gonna be objecting to it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's crazy. Mm. Not right. good. We'll be back after this.
Ayrton's DreamSpot 18K is the first laser source multifunctional multiple use automated luminaire and is fitted with an Osram Laser Phaser P6000 phosphor conversion module. The monochrome laser emitter module, calibrated at 5600 Kelvin, enables the luminaire to achieve 18,000 lumens of power. Its 13 element optical zoom system can obtain a highly uniform fat beam with no hotspots, providing a zoom range of 2 to 34 degrees in beam mode and 6 degrees to 54 degrees in spot mode. Alright crew, on the uh, subject of casual, there's something I'd like to get off my chest. Now, I spend a lot of time working at home, writing, you know, writing content, writing for the magazine. And this is something I've heard a lot of people who are like freelance or run their own businesses like me do have to field from people. Everybody thinks that we always work like in our Slacker. PJs yeah. and we just like, you know, watch TV Slacker. and hang around and somehow magically we still stay employed. No. I thought that's what you did. No! See? I can <laughs> almost you hear would. your Ugg boots when no, I'm talking about I don't even own a pair of Ugg boots. Look, everybody I know who's successfully running their own business mainly out of their home does the same thing that I do, which is you get up, you have a shower and you get dressed. For I don't work. get up. I, I like my best stuff in bed yeah. in the nude with a tray of tea <laughs> in no, the that, morning. That's two things you don't want yeah. quite that close to it, just hot tea, right? And you're not, <laughs> just be careful, all right? I thought I'm I was sure. a bad taste guy around yeah. here. I can't unhear no, that. You can't unsee and it. I'm it's just a, thinking of fields of tulips and lavender and <laughs> la la la. I agree. These people are disciplined. They wake up. Yes. There, there is a way you can work at home. It is. Yeah. yeah, you should get dressed. And, yes, I'm you should change rooms. Make, get, make yep, the yep. bed. And also find a good place that you can work like a. Like this morning yeah. at the breakfast place I go to, there was a dude doing his work. Mm. And I can do really good work at the pub, mm -hmm. honestly. Yeah, yeah. When I'm, I'm with people, yeah, yeah. I can get my laptop out. People around me, I get the energy. Yeah, there's a yeah, cafe a I go to sometimes yeah. for, for the same reason. It's a, it's a nice place. They work. There's like a lot of people and they're doing the same kind yeah. of thing. So, yeah, it's good. And then they switch the Wi Fi off of me. And yeah, I, and then it's from the They go, we'll get that guy out of here. <laughs> Flip. Over to Macca's. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's not a good place to work. I can't read your columns now. Because you know, you know they're very organic. Oh, dear, oh dear. Okay, all right. We're just going to get our minds out of this now. Now, um, we had a lovely special guest here in the studio. Um, Jason Tang is a product specialist at Mackie Drop By and uh, showed us the new Axis Digital Mixing System. So let's have a look at that. Welcome to Gearbox. I'm really excited to have Jason Tang from Mackie, product specialist here with the beta version of the Axis Digital Mixing System. Jason, can you tell me about it? Hi, great. Um, yeah, I would love to tell you about the DC16 and the DL32R together. They're core. Cool. The Axis Digital Mixing System. Mm -hmm. um, it's a fully modular system. So, what do I mean by saying that? Um, you expand to your need. Yep. It comes in parts. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, this is DC16, the DL32R, the DL32R is the brain. This is the control surface. Obviously, you see iPads on it. You have up to 20 iOS devices that you can connect to one system. So that's a lot, a lot of power in here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's up to 20 iPads or iPhones with people doing Anything. fallback mixes. Yep. yep. Okay. So you can have it on your phone, mm -hmm. iPhones, iPod Touch, iPad, and obviously the iPad Pro mm -hmm. down here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, incredible value because, as, you, as I said, it's modular, so you expand to your need. Mm -hmm. whole entire system is connected via Dante which allows you to connect up to hundreds and hundreds of brands mm -hmm. out there mm -hmm. that's Dante capable. Yep. Yeah. So I would like to spend a bit of time going much more on the DC16 rather than the DL32R. That's mm. where all the power is, but the beauty is here. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah. We've previously reviewed uh, the DL32R, yeah. so let's concentrate on uh, what's new in terms of the actual control in your hands. Now. Cool. Uh, let's start. All right, Jason, can you talk me through what's happening on the surface? Okay. Um, the DC16, basically does everything on the iPad or the iPhones. You could you can see everything and control everything via the DC16. Mm -hmm. First, we've got the three iPads that you can have in different view. As you can see, it's identified as A, B, and C. On A, we've got it on current. On B, I've got it on first history. On C, it's a fixed view. I can switch it up to second history mode, meaning I can see sec um, a history of what I've done earlier on. Um, let me talk through about history a bit. Um, most console you see, and uh, basically you see what you select and what you're working on. 
on the DC16, the screens, the iPads for, for here, um, it shows you what you did earlier on, meaning if I'm on channel one, I go to channel two, it will reflect channel one on my left and channel two on my right. Okay, so I'm just going to talk through the control surface a bit. As you can see down here, it's where you get into the processes of the selected channels. Gain, which is all right here. High pass filters of all the channels. Sense of all the channels, which you can select through here too. All the auxiliaries and everything. Pan of all the channels. EQ parameters of all the channels. Switching up between modern and vintage. Graphic EQ for the master. Dynamics for all the channels, your, your masters and your selected channels. Mm -hmm. On the left, you've got talkback, monitor, phones, which is here. You've got your core, re recall of your shows and uh, saving of your scenes. On top right here, it's your fat channel. Once you're done with everything um, that you need to do before the show, you have very little chances of need needing to go do a lot. Chances are you would need a couple of really important parameters like your frequencies, your band of all your frequencies, your frequencies and Q, your gain, your low pass filters, your threshold for your gate, threshold for compressor, ratio, and your range, and obviously your pan. So this is the fat channel that allows you to move through, through things really, really quickly. On the left, what we have down here is your view. You might not want to see all the channels. You can pre-assign this. If I just want to see my drums, I hit onto view. Now all I see are my drums. Okay, now how customizable is that? It's really up to the engineer what mm -hmm. he needs to do and what he wants to see. Mm -hmm. So it's fully customizable in all sense. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of the strong point of DC16. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, we don't want like telling the engineer how to mix. Mm. what he should mm. do mm. or what he should see. Mm. It should be decided by the engineer himself. Mm -hmm. yeah. So on the right, we've got um, our, all our mixes, all our outputs. Um, there's a, up to 28 output buses, left, right, aux. I scroll down, I would see my three built-in um, effects. I've got my subgroups, assignable VCAs, my matrix. Tons and tons and tons of outputs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's how configurable is that? Um, yet again, uh, this is this are fix. Yep. yep. The mute and the view groups are all configurable. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And uh, the very important go button. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I like a prominent go button. It's yeah. Just a thing. So it's a double tap recall or save. Yeah. So if you were to do that, it would not recall the scene mm -hmm. unless you do this. Yep. Twice, it will record your scenes just to prevent you yeah. from calling something that you do not <laughs> want to. <laughs> Excellent. Um, I think we're going to see a lot of these out uh, teaming up with the very successful DL32R. And look, I've always got a thing about being able to get to all of my bands of EQ and get to them you mm -hmm. know, with one knob. So that's my tick of approval right there. Thank you. <laughs> so, yeah, it's always a bugbear with me. You've got to have my EQ. So um, yeah, anyway, Jason, thanks for talking us through it. And uh, yeah, cool. Have a Great. Good one. Thanks. All right, that's all we've got time for this week. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again next week. Bye. Bye.